be a new wood, you'd certainly want to protect as much of that as you can. What you got over there, Ron? Got some of Boy, this is some groceries, I'll tell you about. That's good. Thank you, sir. We tried. Make my life worthwhile. Deep fry this little bird today. If they'll leave that stem on it, that pear will last sitting on a shelf three weeks. It's time for Down Home in the Tri-States with your host, Ron Jones. If it's farming, gardening, information, or just plain interesting, you can catch it all right here on Down Home in the Tri-States. Glad to have you with us on Down Home in the Tri-States. I'm Ron Jones, your host, and we sort of do appreciate you watching this program and doing business with our sponsors, because that's what keeps us on the air, folks. So y'all remember that when you go see those sponsors, be sure and tell them where you saw their advertisement on Down Home in the Tri-States. I want to say good morning to Cliff and Julie Cruz. Ran into them the other day and uh, had a real good conversation with them. And so if y'all uh, know Cliff and Julie Cruz, y'all tell them we're talking about them on Down Home in the Tri-States. I want to remind you about the Council on Aging, Two Wheels for Meals. It's a marble run. All proceeds go to the Council on Aging uh, to help benefit the uh, Meals on Wheels. The state, have take, the state, as I understand, is taking a lot of the funds away from that program, and they're trying to make that up, so uh, they're having a benefit. On July 19th, registration will be again at 9 a.m., uh, dry or wet. The first kickstand goes up at 9.30 a.m. until 10.30 a.m. Uh, coffee and donuts will be provided at the time of registration. Uh, it's going to begin in the uh, Sassy Scissors parking lot at 705 7th Street, Chipley, Florida, 32428. That's the address there. Uh, prizes will be awarded for top three scores in the Marble Run, and uh, the lunch will be provided. The entry fee for this is $15, and uh, an extra rider is $5. So uh, y'all be sure and... Uh, uh, participate in that if you've got any in the information and if you want any information you can contact David at 850-326-1346 that's the uh, two wheels for meals marble run to benefit the Washington County Council on Aging uh, also I want to remind you about uh, some things uh, oh we're going to be having a drawing now next month in July got some good stuff we're going to give away including a peer chair y'all seen those Hugo peer chairs that's about $130 value folks Y'all want to get your entries in there. The address is on the screen there. Y'all let, let, let us have them. We're going to have a lot of other prizes too. and We're going to have a, 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 a free big bag of dog food from Main Street Market. Uh, and just that and just a whole bunch of other stuff. So y'all be sure and get your names in so we can draw it. It's going to be uh, toward the end of July now. Let's see. Oh yeah, I want to tell you about uh, at uh, Main Street. They have got plenty of local watermelons up there ready to go. And next Saturday now is, is the uh, Watermelon Festival in uh, Chipley, Florida. And y'all can stop by and get to Main Street. They're going to have the freshest watermelons. They've got a whole bunch of them. Going to have them everywhere, okay? Y'all probably get your best deal there, too. So get them at Main Street Market. It's on the corner of Highway 90 and 77, right in the middle of everything in Chipley, Florida. So uh, y'all uh, tell old Paul we was talking about him, Paul Davidson, and you tell him you want them watermelons, okay? He's going to have the best watermelons in the festival. Y'all need to go up there and get you one. Uh, also, I uh, want to remind you also about, uh, uh, let's see, oh, he did mention that they've got uh, uh, plenty of peas, fresh peas coming in, and uh, they got local tomatoes, uh, these local peas, local tomatoes, Chilton County peaches, boy, I got some of those things, and they are fantastic, let me tell you what. So y'all get up to Main Street Market now, that's on the corner of Highway 90 and 77, and uh while you're up there to fit the uh, watermelon festival, get you one of them watermelons. You can get it on your way home, or uh, while you're there, you might want to get it while you while you're there. So you make sure you get you one. I mean, those things, hundreds and hundreds of watermelons, they go too, folks. So especially when they they're good like that, you want to get them. Anyway, I think that's about it. So y'all uh, uh, stay with us and uh, watch our sponsors do business with them. We have got some good stuff on the program today. Got a little uh, repeat of a scallop program we did because it's about scallop season and a lot of people want to know how to do it and everything, so we're going to have that. So, down home in the Tri States, I'm Ron Jones, and y'all watch this and we'll be back in just a minute. Come on, baby, help me to spend this dough. Come on, baby. 
metal roof and cut to fit but don't have time to wait four or five days or a week you need to come to surplus and salvage of chipley it's as simple as bringing your truck or trailer to surplus and salvage of chipley just tell them how much and how long and they'll make it happen metal roofing is made on the spot on the site they can even make ridge cap drip edge flashing whatever you need they'll make it get the lowest prices galvaluma dollar 30 a foot thin colors available at a low dollar 89 a foot folks you won't find this low price anywhere in the panhandle on metal roofing are you worried about your motor homes and tractors and equipment and campers sitting out in the rain, hot sun and freezing cold just running. Need some cover? Surplus and Salvage has pole barn kits for anybody's budget. Surplus and Salvage of Chipley has the lowest prices on pole barn kits in the Panhandle. In stock kits from 24 by 24 to 32 by 60. Or just tell them what size you want and they'll make it happen. Most popular 24 by 36 is a low $19.99 and that covers a lot of equipment folks. You need it? They got it at Surplus and Salvage of Chipley. Highway 90, west of Highway 77, 850-638-7353. Surplus and salvage of chips. Where are the places you're most likely to encounter a tough, rugged, aggressive, yet gentle rhino? Up and down the rivers and lakes, everywhere that I go, people are doing double takes, checking out my rhino. No doubt about it, it's the very best. Even my mother-in-law is impressed. Now you know what I know Make your boat a rhino Main Street Market in Chipley is this area's headquarters for top quality livestock and pet feed. Paul Davidson at Main Street Market carries only the best and most precious feed you'll find anywhere in the Tri-States area. Cattle feed, dog feed, horse feed, rabbit feed, goat feed, chicken feed. From top quality Seminole, the preferred feed for show animals, to FRM, Tucker and more. To roll hay and belt hay, Main Street Market on the corner of Highway 90 and 77 in Chipley, Florida has it all. Main Street Market is also your fresh and frozen vegetable and fruit outfit, plus deer corn and pine straw. Main Street Market, tell them Ron sent you. Have you got water problems? Pump won't pump? Do you need answers and solutions, but you don't want the runaround and you want someone honest? Well, have no fear, folks. Do what I did. Call the man, Water Dan. Dan Dubosel, take care of your problem. Hello, folks. This is Water Dan. I work on submersible pumps, jet pumps, do repairs and upgrades, anything to do with an existing water well. I would appreciate it if you call. Call the man, Water Dan. He'll take care of your water problems. 850-535-9308. 535-9308. Folks, you know, why people from Washington, Jackson, Holmes, Bay County, you know why they call Water Dan? Because Dan Dubose knows what he's doing. Y'all give him a call. My name is Maine Davis, and I invite y'all to watch Ron Jones down home in the Tri-State every Saturday morning at 5.30. At this time, I'd like to call Larry forward to the podium, and let's have an invitation. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We just thank you for the many blessings that you bestowed upon us. Lord, as we enter a new year, Lord, we just pray that you will continue to bless us in a mighty way. Lord, we realize there's a lot of uncertainty in the farm bill and what we're going to be doing. But Lord, we know that you have the answer. And Lord, we just thank you for what you do for our state. And we thank the fans that have prepared this food this evening. And Lord, may it bless us. Lord, may it fill us. Lord, may it help us to be a better servant for you. We bless this food to the nurse of our bodies and us to your service. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to give a presentation now to the outgoing board members. I'd like those two gentlemen, if they would, to come up. Scott Robinson and Bob Barnett. Scott, don't forget you with this flag. We appreciate the job that you have
Yeah. Enjoy working with you. Bob, same here. We enjoyed it. Appreciate the job that you've done. USDA and the National Peanut Board provide us with guidelines to conduct the nomination process and uh, explains the regulations that we must adhere to before and during this process. I will uh, give a short outline um, before we begin the nominations. <coughs> First, uh, National Peanut Board notifies Florida Peanut Producers Association uh, that the board member and alternate positions are expired. Florida Peanut Producers Association then schedules a nominating meeting. Uh, USDA requires Florida Peanut Producers to issue public notice at least 30 days in advance of the meeting. USDA uh, AMS arranges for a county FSA representative to attend and oversee the nominations. The nominees are required to complete the AD 755 background information form and a federal lobbyist statement provided by USDA. Florida Peanut Producers Association then compiles the package along with evidence of our press release and efforts to inform the public of the date and time of the meeting and submit it to the National Peanut Board. They in turn su submit the package to the Secretary of Agriculture for the appointment. The Secretary of Agriculture reviews the nomination packages and usually makes the appointment within six months. I'm up here at uh, Oak Mountain State Park, close to Birmingham. Today is February the 12th. Been raining about all day. Right now it's about 36 degrees, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, this is a real nice park. They've just got through paving all the sites. As you can see, they got fresh asphalt on the, all the sites. They got, I don't know how many they got here, but they, they got a, several sites here. I'm on site 29, which is kind of up on the, one of the highest parts of, highest uh, areas in the park. Uh, we've had sleet. He had no snow yet, but uh, they predict for tonight, from starting in a little bit in the morning, we should get two to maybe four inches of snow up here tonight. So I thought I'd take this picture before it did snow. They got the park closed down right now. Uh, they say if you go out, you might not be able to come back in. They're not going to take any chances of the roads coming in here being slick. There is several steep hills to come up. I just went down and got one of my gas bottles filled up. And I, that's a nice bunch of people down here at this gatehouse here at Oak Mountain. Uh, they was concerned about me being cold and all. I said, no ma'am. I said, I'll be all right. And she said, well, if you get cold, you just come over there. And she told me what site she was in, and she said I could stay with her. But, you know, I can find enough of stuff in this camper right here to keep me warm. I got three tanks of gas. I got a lot of clothes, blankets. I can get out here and fire that best diesel. I can sleep in that truck the rest of the night. It's, it's got a full tank of fuel. So, I appreciate her offer to, you know, but I'm not going to get cold. I was in Greenland for a year. It was 45 below zero up there. And I had plenty of clothes to keep me warm up there. Yeah, I'll find enough here too. Well, it's Thursday. February the 13th, we got about two, three inches of snow last night up here on Oak Mountain. I was a little late getting up. It's uh, 
nearly 10 o'clock. So I decided I'd come out here and film a little of it. Looks like my truck's still covered pretty good. When I looked out about midnight, it was all white out here. Most of it's melted now, though. The season is around the corner, so get a brand new Kubota M-Series tractor during our Get Something Started sales event. Get a feature-loaded M-Series with powerful engine options from 46 to 135 horsepower. With Kubota, you get comfort, intuitive controls, and value. So make a great deal on a Kubota M-Series with zero down and 0% APR financing for up to 60 months during Kubota's Get Something Started sales event. See and save on all Kubota tractors and equipment at Soil Tractor today. Folks, there ain't no better way to wake up to breakfast in the morning than there is to Registers Meat Products. They got your regular smoked sausage, and they got your hot smoked sausage. I like that one. And they got your center cut cured bacon. Man, that's my favorite. I love this stuff. And they got your smoked pork chops. Folks, you can get your Registers Meat at over 140 grocery outlets throughout the area. If they don't have it, tell them they need to get it. It's Registers. Tell them you want it, you demand it. And if you're in Cottondale, Florida, check out their store over there and get that Pick 5 for $19.99. Just like old Andy always said, it's good. Have you got water problems? Pump won't pump. Do you need answers and solutions, but you don't want the runaround and you want someone honest? Well, have no fear, folks. Do what I did. Call the man, Water Dan. Dan Dubosel, take care of your problems. Hello, folks. This is Water Dan. I work on submersible pumps, jet pumps, do repairs and upgrades, anything to do with an existing water well. I would appreciate it if you call. Call the man, Water Dan. He'll take care of your water problems. 850-535-9308. 535-9308. Folks, you know why people from Washington, Jackson, Holmes, Bay County, you know why they call Water Dan? Because Dan Dubos knows what he's doing. Y'all give him a call. Hello everybody, I'm Ron Jones. Join me for the best little program on television down home in the Tri-State, Saturday morning at 5.30, right here on News 13 WMDB. Y'all come to see us if you will. <laughs> St. Joseph Bay. That's in Port St. Joe. That's where we are today. We're, uh, Scallop season just opened up, and we are gonna came over here. We're going to try to do a little scallop program for you. And then this, this year's scallop season runs through September 25th. So y'all need to remember that you got a little extra time this, this, uh, this year. So I wanted just to tell you a few things before we start. Right now we're in about four feet of water. I'm, I'm hoping the scallops are shallow so we don't have to dive for them. Because I don't, you know, I don't, I don't I, we're just snorkeling. That's all we're doing. Anyway, what, first, first and foremost, to go scalloping, uh, it's uh, just like fishing almost. You got to have a Florida fishing license. Okay, I think the least you can get is about a three day if you're a tourist. But uh, Florida fishing license, you got to have a current Florida fishing license. If you don't, you're gonna get. You're gonna have to pay some money. They're gonna get you. They'll nail you. I'm telling you. They sit on the hill and watch over there. So you got to. You you, you know you, you can't keep more than you're supposed to get because they watch you. If you're gonna try to run to the car and dump them off and come back and get some more, don't do that because they watch. They watch. Trust me. All right, now got that. You got to have a fishing license. Okay. Next thing you got to have is a diver down flag. You can get you can get one that if you can hook on your belt or your, your swimsuit and it'll drag around with you, or you can put put one on the boat. If you put one on the boat, there's a certain distance that you can get away from the boat. The best thing to do is to get, get one of these that floats, and uh, that way you won't have to worry about anything. It'll go with you, and it lets. Motors know that somebody is a diver down down there. That's what it's called, a diver down flag. Divers down. This one floats, so you got that. Next thing you got to have is a snorkel and a mask. And a mask. Unless you want to hold your eyes open in that salt water. Snorkel and a mask. There's going to be times when you see one, you got to go under the water to get him, and then you come back and you blow your water out and everything. So you got to have that. A lot of people wear flippers. Uh, you know, I don't like flippers, so I'm not going to wear no flippers. What I've got on is aqua socks. I do like to put something on my feet because you don't ever know what you're going to step on out there. And, and with, with the flippers, you know, I want to be able to get up and run. If something 
gets me on the leg, and then I want to get up and run as fast as I can. I can't do it with flippers on. It's hard to do it with these things on, but I want to head to the boat as quick as I can get there. But anyway, so that's the main things you got to have. And uh, so, you know, it's a t tie don't really make a whole lot of difference on this, but uh, they, they pretty much, when they're out here, they're out here. Like I said, I'm hoping they're going to be in this shallow water. So uh, we're going to get started here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can find a few before we, uh, before we crank everything back up. And once I find them, then we'll, uh, we'll get started. So y'all stay with us. I'm Ron Jones. On the camera today is Eric Jones. He could have been an engineer, a navigator, a teacher, or a veterinarian. But rather than wear any one of those hats, he chose to wear all of them. He's a Florida farmer. Tell you what, they're scattered out there, but I, I think I found a pretty good area. So uh, I'm gonna show you what I got so far, and I think uh, we're gonna go back see if we can't find a few more. How about that? I can tell you, you find all kind of stuff out there. All kind of little shells like this. Of course, this one's empty. You know that these. Got little spikes and things on it. That's kind of neat, ain't it? What do you think, Eric? Yeah, that is neat. So anyway, but let me show y'all what uh, what we got so far. So they're scattered, but I think I found a pretty good, pretty good area out there. So. Well, good, cause I'm gonna be hungry when we get done with this well, trip this, here. Well, this is. Uh, I tell you what, this is your mess. I'm gonna get me one, okay? All right. See, Eric's not. Scalding, but he's just filming. What do you think? All right. They're not running real big, but I'm hoping the muscles are going to be pretty good size. You was wondering about them eyes. Can you see them eyes? I get it now. See them little blue eyes? Yeah. Can you see it? Uh, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but I see him. Yeah. That's what you better do now. Not what you want, then you keep treat it sweet and kind. Oh, yeah, then you let it breathe. Don't make it be that old choking kind. Oh, no. these things first you got to have a scallop knife that's a scallop knife right there you know you get to get them at the tackle store anywhere and then you want to get these things open these are already pretty much open you just have to pry them open but you can see that he's trying to close on me you see that muscle in there can you see that the white yeah there? yeah yeah so he's he's trying to close up on me that's why it's a good idea to get you a piece of tape put around your thumb there because that's you got to hold him open like that okay and what you want to do is you want to take this this scallop knife and you want to run it up against the top that's that's the top the white part's the bottom run it up against the top and just cut that muscle loose just like that once you do that you can spread them apart like that 
okay? Throw the shell back in the water. That's okay. It won't hurt anything. And then if you, this is part I can't do that well, but if you can catch him just right, there's a white thing right here. You see that? It's a white piece right here. There you go. If you can get him just right on that thing and catch him, you should be able to pull all them guts off in one sweep. I almost got him, see? I almost got him. There's a little bit more left on there, so it was loose, so I must have got it too. And that's what the scallop muscle looks like. Okay, we've told you about the rules and regulations on scalloping. We've showed you how to catch them. And we showed you how to clean them. And then we're going to show you how to cook them. There's several different recipes out there that you can do this. Uh, you can fry them if you want to, or bake them however you want to. These are sautéed. And I like this recipe because it's pretty simple. Uh, it calls for a pint of scallops. We got almost a pint. Came a big thunderstorm. We had to leave, so but that's what we got. That's a good mess for us. We're gonna have some fish and uh, fresh grouper and some uh, uh, fresh uh, oyster stew. So we're gonna have several things tonight, and, and we're also gonna have sautéed uh, scallops. So got to have one one pint or close to it of sauté of scallops. Got to have two tablespoons of butter. I preheated my butter. I pre-melted it. Preheat your, your skillet. When it starts that, you know you got it right. One quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. One quarter teaspoon of salt. You can adjust this the way you like it. One quarter teaspoon of pepper. And one quarter teaspoon of fresh or even a dry parsley or how you want it chopped. Just make sure it's chopped up. Put that in there. All right, we cooked these for about another minute while y'all was watching the break, and uh, they're, they're pretty much done now. So I've, I've just taken a couple off, let them cool a little bit, because you want the big one or the little one? I want the big one. All right, I'm going to taste the little one. You knew I was going to say asking me a question like that, yeah. didn't you? Man, mm, mm, How mm. is it? Terrific, yeah. Mm, man. Take good, don't it? Soft and tender. Soft and tender and just, just right. <laughs> 